amazing, amazing, amazing. Anybody who's a homeowner should make that um, discipline themselves, make that decision that, you know, to pay off their house because of the freedom you have once it's paid off. And also, when we bought our house, we came from a smaller house. And we were looking at a house that we could afford off one income. And I often tell my husband now, we should have bought a bigger house. We could afford it a bigger house. And he goes, no, we were living below our means. So the house we bought was, you know, the right size. So I would say, in purchasing a house, you are buying a house for you and your family, not to keep up with the Joneses or someone else, but you actually purchase the house that you can actually afford. When we moved into this house, <clears throat> uh, we put a third down. Our interest rate was at 14%. Um, four years later, we got an interest rate, we refinanced at six and a half percent. And it took us 17 years to pay off the house. And we put, we started putting extra toward our principal. Yes. And we started that because I was paying the bills and I sent a bill in late. And from that, he said, since they're going to charge us a late fee, I'm going to send it in every month toward the principal. And then just by seeing the fact that you were paying so much in interest, it's like, wow, we only paid this much for the house, but we're paying, you know, like double that in interest. So it's like, it's if we pay it off sooner, yes. that's a lot of money that we're going to be saving. And then it reached a point where you could see that if you put X amount of dollars in addition to what you were paying, the mortgage would go down a thousand dollars so then that became our goal is like let's lower the mortgage by a thousand dollars every month but i think so too from um listening to the teachings at wing christian center you know uh, about being out of debt and pastor always saying oh and no man nothing but to love him and and just that the teaching at Wheaton Christian Center and the fact that if you don't owe anybody anything, you can do, you free it up to do lots more, you know. Ooh, I was blind, amazing, amazing, amazing. For us to pay off our house, there was, there was a, um, commitment. We had to make some sacrifices. There are things that we weren't able to do because instead of certain splurges, we put that those funds toward paying our house off. So to pay a house off, to pay off any debt, you really have to be disciplined and you have to be committed to it and you have to make some sacrifices. We didn't take a lot of vacations. Um, we did a lot of sacrifices. The kids were always in private school. Um, we did a lot of staycations <laughs> or visiting grandma, but we didn't do a lot of, you know, trips. And we did Disney, Disneyland, Disney World. But Several we didn't do, times. yeah. But we didn't do like, you know, spring break vacations and stuff like that. We we were sacrificing, but. It's not like we were, you know, going without, you know, things just to pay the extra money on the principal. And that reminds me of the uh, fact when we had the uh, microburst. That happened right, that was actually when we were getting close to paying our house off. Yes. And we decided to double tide for that period. So uh, instead of paying our house off, 
with the extra payments, we double tied. <laughs> okay. When we paid off our last payment, um, I was like, okay, I can get my new car now. <laughs> he goes, no, we can't get a new car now because uh, we need to wait. We're debt free. We don't need, like, no, I've sacrificed all these years. I want a car. So that's what we did. We bought, we paid our house off in um, August 2007, July 2007. August 2007, I had my new car. But now I see. Ooh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Basically, because we were debt free. It opened all kinds of doors for us, all kinds of avenues were open for us as far as her work, our ability to retire, our ability to set up things for our children and our children's children. Yes. I mean, and that became, that has become uh, a goal for us is to, for our children's children to, to call us blessed. <laughs> to call us a blessing so all those things were opened up because we could do that because the funds that were available weren't going to pay interest to someone else and that's for us to to be parents and to call ourselves role models instead of telling our kids this is what you should do we've modeled that in front of them and they can see that it can be done it's you don't just you don't have to owe people for the rest of your life i want i want was a loss but now i'm found i was blind now I see. If you don't owe anybody anything, you can do, you're freed up to do lots more, you know, with your money. You can help people, you know, and, you know, if someone is in need, you can, you know, bless them, not expecting them to, you know, pay you back. And I would say also that uh, being debt free, if there's, you know, different projects at the church that comes up, you can jump right in. You don't have to go and, Think about, you know, if I um, didn't have a mortgage, I could, you know, jump into this project or I can give money toward, you know, this project. But being debt free, you can do that freely. And also with um, your kids, if your kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing, if they're, you know, trying to become debt free, if they are, um, you know, trying to um, save money, you're able to help them. Um, like if, if they're buying a car, instead of them going to um, credit union or bank to borrow money for a car, you can actually buy them a car and let them pay you back the interest instead of them going and doing it, you know, with the bank or credit union. That's like keeping the money in the family. I like that <laughs> idea. Where'd you get that? <laughs> because oh. you did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Oh, hey, yeah. Ooh. Amazing, yeah. Amazing, and amazing. Another thing that happens when you're debt free, it f also frees up funds for investments. So you can invest freely in the future and it, once you reach a point where you're debt free, it raises your tolerance to risk because when you're in debt, you're afraid to invest because if you lose, it's catastrophic, whereas it's not going to be a major burden if you if 
you have an investment and the investment goes down, you can still stay with the investment because it's not part of your income or something that you're relying on. Kids, you know, like starting um, college funds, you know, for them, and doing it without your kids knowing that you're actually starting a college fund, you know, for them. So, like, if you loan them some money for a car, and if they paying you the interest, they actually thinking that, wow, they actually charged us interest. Them not knowing that you using that interest that they're paying you to bless them so that you could invest in some type of, you know, mutual fund for them, but them not knowing that. So being a blessing, being a blessing to your kids and your grandkids. Amazing, yay, yay. amazing, Ooh. amazing grace. The first car that we bought after uh, we paid off our house, we we had a home equity, and we wrote a check for that car, but we still had to pay the monthly notes for that. So, so being by being debt free, you can actually go and buy a car for cash. And it's like you're not, you don't have to have that certain car, but if you want to reward yourself and buy that certain car, you can actually go into the dealership, you know, not being pressured. If they don't want to do the deal, you walk out. They do the deal, you write them a check. And, but it's, it's really, it's a good feeling to, to be debt free and to go in and pay cash for a car and then being able to retire debt-free. I was working for the post office for 21 years. I left the post office, and after five years, I went to another, I went to a school district. And um, when I went there, what I was doing, my job was like data entry is what they told me. And I went there because I wanted to go to grad school and I was gonna pay off grad school. I didn't want it to be a burden on or other finances. So anyway, after eight years, they it was a job they had created. No one trained me for the job. So I took the salary thinking it's data entry, but it started out to be more. Every year they gave me more work, more work, more work. And I was doing like all this work. It's like, okay, I need more money. And they would promise me money every year. They would promise me more and more. So after eight, seven years, they did, they gave me like a 14% plus a bonus. And the next year they were supposed to give me another sizable increase, which they didn't do. So I was vested, I can retire and get a pension with them. And I went and told them I need to have an increase. And they said, well, we can't do that. You can't negotiate. Everybody else is getting this amount. I said, okay, I'm retiring. So. In 2013, I actually retired. Even if I didn't work, you could pay the mortgage. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Being debt free allowed me that privilege to retire. Thank you again. <laughs> I love this job. I do. Wait. So yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs>